Friedrich Heinrich Jacobi, 1743-1819, born in Dusseldorf, died in Munich. These are quotes from his book, Flying Leaves. My aim is not to help the reader while away the time, but rather to aim those to whom, as to me, the time is already too fleeting. It is absurd for a man to say that he hates and despises men, but loves and honors humanity. A general without a particular, a humanity worthy of honor and love, without men who are worthy of honor and love, is a fiction of the brain, a thing that has no existence. To lay aside all prejudices is to lay aside all principles. He who is destitute of principles is governed theoretically and practically by whims. There is no one thing in the world for which we can conceive an interest and a love that shall endure forever. Therefore fidelity is required of us, and a firm intent which the soul must be able to create in itself. He who learns this acquires freedom, acquires something of that great property, the property of having life in himself, which is the true philosopher's stone. I know nothing more sublimer and profounder than the saying of the New Testament, Our life is hid in Christ, the God-man, with God. Unquestionably, our life, if there is any true life in us, is hidden deep within us. Nevertheless, it commands aptodictically its own preservation, commands that we bring it forth to the light. Faith and experience, therefore, are the only way by which we can arrive at the knowledge of the truth. True, it is a mystic and to brutalism altogether intolerable way. We must be able to inflict pain upon ourselves if we would attain to virtue and honor. Courage, resolution is above all things necessary to man. The wise man is known by the choice of the ends which he proposes to himself. The prudent man is known by the choice of the means by which he attains his ends, whether they be wise or unwise. But how are the ends themselves to be known? Is the choice of the wisest to decide? Then we cannot say, as we have just said, that the wise man is known by his ends. But what is this one and the same which is to be always willed? It is the glory of God. Every activity proposes to itself a passivity, every labor enjoyment, but every enjoyment presupposes a want. When that is satisfied, the enjoyment ends. All pleasure is necessarily transient. We enjoy ourselves, however, only in our work, in our doing, and our best enjoyment is our best doing. The essence of reason consists in self-perception. It turns into itself. That which it perceives so far as it is conditioned by sense it calls nature that which it perceives so far as it is not conditioned by sense it calls the divine being true enlightenment is that which teaches man that he is a law to himself true culture is that which accustoms him to obey this law without regard to reward and punishment Peace is the masterpiece of reason, says Johann Muller. This is true, not only in regard to civil polity, but in every regard. It is not truth, justice, liberty, which men seek. They seek only themselves. And, oh, that they knew how to seek themselves aright. As my own self is present to me in an incomprehensible manner, so God is present to me likewise in an incomprehensible manner. Instinct harmonizes the interior of animals, religion the interior of man. 
man is unceasingly employed in raising himself from the stuff of the form from the actual to the possible from the world to god it is impossible to be a hero in anything unless one is first a hero in faith the characteristic sign of genius is to forget one's life by living in an idea life in an idea must entirely swallow up the proper natural life only those thoughts which the most profound earnestness has produced and perfected take a cheerful form they make a man joyful this is the secret of socratic irony and hence it is that the taste for genuine socratic irony is so rare it happens to us with ideas as with money the general sign is metamorphosed in our imagination into the thing itself we prefer it to that the seemingly universal medium to each particular end we make ourselves giddy and sink down into the centre of nothing namely of positive falsehood when we undertake to restore from the understanding that which has perished as a feeling from the heart every immediate designation must have been preceded by an immediate every artificial by a natural the more mediated our designation becomes the more artificial our language the more confused and dim our conceptions of the truth all philosophizing is only a more extended fathoming of the invention of language there is often such a silence in me so profound a meditation that i cannot express how distracted seem to me all men whom i see before me no one listens reason is the consciousness of spirit he who loses reason loses himself his self-consciousness his proper being and persistence his person personality is inseparable from reason reason from personality reason also is necessarily connected with liberty and the consciousness of personality is the consciousness of liberty he who philosophizes for himself meets at every step with difficulties of which he who philosophizes for a school experiences nothing philosophy is an internal life a philosophical life is a collected life by means of true philosophy the soul becomes still and at last devout philosophizing is striving to sail up the stream of being and of knowing to its source 